everybody. My name is Farmer Phil and today we're starting part two of the crimping video. So we're just starting the second field. So we have the biggest field done, the top field we call it. We're in the quarry field now. You may be able to tell it's quite tossed. The two storms we got, Storm Ellen and Storm Francis has tossed the corn. You can see the way it's all kind of lying over. It's not flash, which is great. Flash is where it's this year all just lying on the ground and it's a salvage job. It's, this is just tossed. What I mean by tossed is, you can see here, it reminds some of the wild oats, it all kind of falls down in on top of itself and it stays up. You see it's all kind of falling in on top of itself, but it stays up and it's not too bad. It's not ideal, but it's not too bad. You can see the combine is working away there perfect again. It. So, straw. Great, we'll just have a look, see how he's trashing. Go a bit where stub is a bit shorter. So I don't, don't see any stuff on the ground. So anyways, we're in the next field. So now it's time to go move our whole operation next to the yard so it's a short draw and we get cutting away on into darkness. Also, this video is sponsored by DH Agri. LED light supplier and do stuff with sprayers as well. Link in the description down below to their website and also to the lights that they sent out to me to go on to the 6290. So we'll hopefully get them fitted in between filling loads. It's kind of the plan. When else do you have time to do these things but when you're waiting in the middle of a job? Anyways, combine's working away. We'll talk a bit more about it. It's a great crop out here, fantastic crop of barley out here. Very heavy. That's one of the reasons why it's kind of gone tossed because it's just so heavy so it should yield very well the crimp pit is about a third full or more so I'd like to think of this field and the next field we should have enough to fill the crimp pit and not have to go anywhere else but anyways we go empty loads and move everything down in there and at some stage we'll get the lights changed on the 6290 the top bar lights on the cab and I'll We'll have a look at the before and afters then at the end of the video of that. Well, that's the plan. So anyways, we go. Get motor. So now, so now we just have everything brought back to the yard. Also, you're wondering them bird screeching. That's a bird scarer, just makes noises. No good for crows, but good for starlets during the winter. But we need a machine now that we bought a while ago. We need the Massey Digger. The gap just going out into the field is a wee bit mucky and we want to scrape away the muck that we bring into the yard. So I have the head cam, got time lapse, and let's go do some digging with our Massey 50. Making some music.
again. That's one of the, the problems. You can see the way that the barley is. Tossed, lodged, all lying over. It means it's low to the ground. To be able to harvest it, you have to go low. When you go low, unfortunately, you find the stones that weren't picked or rolled. So yeah, but other than that's going great. Huge crop of stuff on it, yielding very well. Straw, should be a good good pile of straw off it now. Because it, it's, it's just a fantastic crop of stuff now, fantastic. Yielding well, the straw yield should be good. So anyways, we get back to lifting with or digging out the pass with the massive. And that, lads, is why we bought this machine. It just scraped off that muck. Handy, simple, quick and easy. Now I get the teleport to put in a bit of stone that we have because the front steering ain't good in that and it just wouldn't do the job. So we'll just use the telly just to smooth in a bit of stone. So we'll go do that next and the combine is back up and running. So can't see us doing too much more because the dew is down or coming down. So yeah, we'll Probably be finishing up, I'd say, within the next half an hour. You'll easily fill that now. You'll I'd say, yeah, that. no bother filling that now, what's out there. I'd say it, it'll surpass it. It will, yeah. Yeah, it'll surpass it, definitely. Like, I, 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 we have to come back in and do a ton now. There's still a ton out there to be done. Oh, in the... In the hopper. Right? Oh, okay. And if you have that feed, then to top it off. It's yeah. Nice job. It's a bit dry, that other stuff now, whether we want to put stuff in water or not, I don't know. How are moisture is it? 22 and a half. 22 and a half? Mmm. Yeah, it is a bit on the dry side. A little bit dry now. Yeah. Gone black with the weather. Yeah. That's just purely the weather. Just all of fucking room. Mm, this should look it. Yeah. That's, that's life. Yeah. So, any other remarks on the crops? Oh, she's grand. I'm well happy with a very thin crop of wheat. A heel is very fierce, man. Well. Yeah. Shocking well and, and lovely. So it was 27.5% there this evening. Oh, this evening? Yeah. Yeah. It so came down, down 6%. Yeah. For the day. Yeah. But he did shocking well. For the pot it was, though. Yeah. It was great. And all the straws bailed up there, 70 it's odd well over. It's done well over 3 tonne. 3 tonne to the acre? Yeah. yeah. And what was the two varieties? Can you remember? The down below in the. In the they're in the chemical Chemo store. store. I have the labels kept off the right. bags. Do you ever you can't remember what they were? Diego, Snake Bite, no, they're barley. Double shot was one of them. Double shot. That's it. Yeah. yeah. We'll pick it up again tomorrow and hopefully I get the lights fitted into the well, I will get the lights fitted in the sixties or ninety tomorrow because I'll have time to do it. So yeah. that's the plan. Anyways, we'll leave it at that for today. Yeah. So now everyone, it is day three of harvest. Combine's working away, they're rising a lot of dust. A lot of dust, which is a good sign, it's dry, but there's a problem to it being that dry. It was too dry yesterday when we were cutting this. So as you can see there, we are just preparing a bit of water. Substitute for moisture. Yeah, unfortunately we have to add water to it. What was it, 22%? 22, yes. Yeah. So not dry enough to go in for storage, but not moist enough, wet enough for crimping. So we have to add water to it. We're also going to have to put more powder on it just to get to preserve right. Because when it's low in moisture, it, get, it can get very hard to preserve. So that's why we're after just rolling out a water pipe there. So can get it in. So anyways, oh, that's going to be, we're going to be pulling up, driving across that now. Okay, so we'll go get a trailer. We'll go start the process all over again and we turn straw and we get baling if it's dry enough.
Hey, you straight in my head. So, while we're waiting on the mill to fill the first trailer, we'll go, we're in 6 to now, we'll go fit her new lights, new top bar lights, so here they are. So, we'll go pop these in. We have adapters in that got for them, so lights. But anyways, we'll have a stab, I could put these in, and then we'll see what they're like. Definitely be a big improvement on what's on the tractor as I saw your original lights that's in it. So yeah, we'll go pop them in now. So, just have the lights put in there. The, a section broke and fingers bent on the header. In stone, so they're just fixing that. And we're rolling away. No problems. But we'll have a look at the lights in a comparison at the end of the video. I have some fudge guides, fudge got before I've changed them. So, uh, tonight we'll have a look at them and we'll do a little comparison, see what it's like. Should be a huge difference. But one of the things I can test now is these LED lights are radio interference free which means if I turn on my front lights and the radio spot on spot on you can you can you see I can see they're on anyways but anyways um just to give a bit of a comparison in the 3075 we've LED lights for when I used to be at the wrapping but they are radio interference free and you have two options either choose the radio or you choose lights you can't pick both because you turn on both the radio just goes to hand but great to have radio interference free lights you want to check them out link in the description down below and as i said before we'll compare them to the old lights at the end of the video but we'll get back into what we're doing and then um, we'll probably go turn some straw i would imagine that's what i'll do next when this load is filled we'll go turn some straw we'll do a bit of drone flying hopefully get a bit bailed the next field we're going to be cutting, or the last field we'll be cutting for crimp. That straw is very green, we'll have a look at it, it's, it's wheat. And we're going to bale and wrap it, but we'll talk more about that when we get that far. The grain we're cutting at the minute is coming in at 18.8% moisture, which is good enough in my books to store it in the shed for rolling for maximum. And uh, for dry, straw is, is pretty good as well. Gets two hours and a turn, should be 100% ready for baling. Um, but yeah, we want for crimp, so we have to add a bit of water. So the water pipe is putting in a, a good skate of water to dampen it to try and help it preserve. But anyways, that's it. All joys. And also, as you can see, I got my old Harry's razor out and I, I got rid of this stuff off my face. But I didn't get rid of this. Not yet. Not yet. It's always too late when you get in to convince yourself to do it. But anyways, we'll leave it at that for now. And another load goes into the yard. So combine is, is well on now. Well on. It's absolutely flying through it out there. Uh, we'll pop the drone when we come back and we'll get them on that bit into the yard. We'll just tip this and um, shove it up and roll it in. This stuff, because it's quite dry, the teleporter just ain't able to get up. It's it just about able to push it up, but 
it's struggle, struggling now, it's struggling. But what, we pull out the, the load and shovel just to roll the pit because the load, the teleporter has the weight, doesn't have the tires. The tires are too narrow and it goes far, way too down into the pit when you're going up and down it and it just kind of ridges in. It, does, it doesn't really roll the, roll the pit that well. Whereas the loading shovel has the tires and has the weight and does a great, great job. Fantastic job. Couldn't, couldn't really do any better. So you can see it now. It's, it's, it's really dry that. I think it needs to be adding a bit more water into that to be honest. I'd say it to him. So, in an un unexpected turn of events, the grain is coming in at 16% moisture. 16.5 I think it is. Which is way too dry for crimping. Way too dry. We, we nearly want to put a litre, you know, be putting a couple of litres to the ton to get wet enough. So, we are now going to start tipping it in the shed dry, 16% moisture. It could keep 110% literally no issues so the can has changed we are nearly finished here so we'll tight enough have maybe a load and a half of uh, this grain trailer tight enough off what's left and we should if i had a look at the pit there and he reckons we should nearly fill it with what's in the other field if we have to we can go to some with other crops that aren't as ripe as this that we could fill it out if we wanted but 16 percent moisture we cannot pass the opportunity of not putting this in the shed dry so that's what we're doing now so i'm going to fire up the drone now i've chatted uh combine's got cut the upper half of the field the ursus is out woofling away so we're going to go get some nice drone footage now we are now cutting 16 percent moisture oh yeah
It is a great sight to see the first load of barley in the shed at 16% moisture. Perfect. Perfect. Oh yeah. Look at that. Nice size head. That you feel is yielding ferocious well. Ferocious well. It'll be a huge crop of straw off it. Huge. We were actually, I'm telling you, I really need to just have this camera like cable tied to my arm that I can't leave it down. We were discussing there whether we bail or not. We've decided we're going to bail the rounds. We're going to leave the middle tomorrow to be good. And we're going to try and... Uh. Oh, excuse me. We're going to try and get the middle of it bailed out of it then tomorrow. Waffle and whatnot. Straw shed is ready. Whole yard is washed down. That's what we were at during the wet week. So we're ready to start putting in stuff and that. So, yeah. It's all just coming together nicely. Uh, bloody bird scare. So we're not... We haven't, we get these three fields cut at the yard and that's, that's the first big move. And then it's fairly handy after that. So anyways, first bit of dry barley in the shed tipped. It's great to see 16% moisture. Couldn't be better. Could not be better. Anyways, we'll get back out to the field. We're going to be moving into the next field very shortly. And we need to move the whole setup into the next field. And um, 
we have to get wrapped in for the, the baler so that we can wrap the straw as we go along in the next field because it's green and yeah anyways we'll be on back out to the field so now i had to put the bucket on the load and shovel because the teleporter wasn't able teleporter just wasn't able to climb up the face anymore without the wheels just digging in and, and spinning out so just put, wash the bucket there put on and we'll just finish off the shoving up and rolling with this the bit that's left to be done which isn't too bad now it's not too bad at all the only problem is the bucket is narrower than the wheels so it just makes it a little bit more difficult just to, to get it right but i will give it a bash anyways oh feels coming out nice Lovely all together so there. A little bit heavy. But nice all the same now. So yeah, you just bail up them the outside rounds that were cut last night. And what we're cutting now is it's too fresh, it's too too much dampness in it. So we'll have to as I said we'll turn that tomorrow and we'll try and get that all bailed up tomorrow. But anyways, concentrate now. I have to get my shehi and some stuff i have to open up this gap well just trim it back like i did the other gap to get the combine true so anyways go get the jeep and a few bits and bobs and we go do a bit of stuff. so just so we just moved into the field of spring wheat oh, wait a machete um you can see it's it's well green the straw is green. You can see the straw is green, so that should make great, great bit of um, stuff to be wrapped. Just check see all the grains, all the heads are, are being trashed. It looks good. Nothing seems to be going through it. No. So it's a thin enough crop, same as same as the others. But well, it's a nice, a nice, a nice decent head on it. So it should should yield all right. Should yield all right. So, what's your verdicts on it so far? I never. These are very good. These are good. How how well do you think the barley yielded? Three and a half ton. Three and a half ton. Yeah. It was not the capture I thought we had. Yeah, yeah you thought it'd be less. I knew it was a great crop of barley. It was very very heavy. Yeah. And I can't understand why it didn't lay down when it was greener. But it. And they don't know when it was riper. Yeah. Huge crop. Yeah. Huge crop. This should do as well as the top fields. This should do better. This is a better crop. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. they'll know for three tons. It did. It did. It did. It said to three. Three. Mm -hmm. Three tons. Mm -hmm. Three tons in spring wheat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. And that's very good get. for a tin crop. That's not yeah. a tin crop. That's a tin crop. Yeah. Um, you, would have to, you would have to ask me when I meet the bees, didn't you? Yeah. We have get get wrapped now to, to get bail in this. I think Robert's ready. So also we're beside the garden. We can now kind of get hat it a bit better. Let's go away. Excuse the weeds. The spuds we're digging away with by spade. They'll all be gone by the time we want to go cut them. The beans are ready to be picked. The peas are pretty much gone. There's there's one more picking on them, and they'll be gone. Brussels sprouts are doing well. The cauliflowers and, and cabbage is gone, lettuce is gone, carrots. Ca carrots, carrots are really well. Carrots are doing fierce well. We're eating away at the carrots at the minute. We'll have a go up and we'll have a look at some of the pumpkins. So we had pumpkins had grown out into the crop of wheat. And this morning we went and we, we threw all the vines back. So we'll go and go and go. So you can see some of the pumpkins here. That's only a small one. We've got a right big one. A right, right big one. On some of these vines. 
we'll be able to get at, at these all a bit better now there look at that in there look at that for a pumpkin huge huge pumpkin have to get a bit of straw to put under it but a huge huge pumpkin we'll be able to do a bit a bit of weeding now we we'll to pop all the, all the pumpkins out of the dirt don't know what we're going to do with them all but we'll find some use for them we will surely we'll find some use for them anyways better get back at it get wrapped sorted get the mill moved in and get ready to finish off this shouldn't take half an hour to cut this field and then we'll be done and i'd say we'll probably be done for the day because it's getting it's gone past six o'clock now so yeah that's it we go get everything moved in
so we're literally on the home straight now the combine's just getting the last of it the fusion is just behind them the crimper's not too far behind and the lad that drives for us is stacking the bales with his 7718S so we gotta go tip a trailer in the yard and then we'll sit back out to the field and we'll talk about the straw and we'll have a look at what all is going on after so here's what we're, we're working at at the minute I mean, just a bit of dry stuff still there. This is it here. Really mushy. Really, really mushy. There's a mixture of green grains and half ripe grains and the good stuff now for the top of the pit. It'll really help seal it with the last dry stuff that's gone in it. A little bit of an issue now. We're starting to get a bit um, full. So we are. Hopefully now the next two trailer loads should just put that nice and level with the walls. And we'll have a little bit of sorting to do just in the edges not to push in any stones but we'll go back out to the field now otherwise they'll be finished and um, we'll see what's going out there and we'll finish up the video and uh, once this is done now that means we're well over halfway in our harvest 2020 and we'd have I think yeah I think it's around 40 or 60 acres left to cut so it's not too bad now it's not too bad we were actually talking about it um, yesterday and at her peak when we used to do the tillage at peak we had 360 acres in 47 fields this year we have 19 fields in 100 and his 160 acres so yeah it's not too bad not too bad at all but anyway we'll tip back out to the field so we're just out here now and you can see the bales there coming in lovely smashing lovely hard bales now one thing you'll notice is we're leaving gaps none of the bales are tightly packed we're leaving them really uh, spaced the reason for that is one of the biggest things if you wrap straw is rodents rats they are dynamite absolute dynamite last time we wrapped the straw must be three years ago two mistakes we made we wet wrapped too much because them bales will be no good for bedding there's literally that straw will have zero to no it literally have no soakage very bad for bedding very heavy and hard handled for bedding as well but they make savage feeding straw savage feeding straw has a lovely sweet smell I'd say it has a, a far better feeding value than standard straw but it's great stuff for feeding that's why we chopped it so it's perfect for going into the feeder the other mistake we made was we stacked them like bales like side bales inside it all nice and neatly in a square in the corner of a field but the rats devoured them ate in between them and ate around them and destroyed them the reason for that is it's like a B&B &B, as my father described it for a rat he has all the bedding he wants and unfortunately as good as your combine is you're always going to have a few grains in the straw and they had their food and they destroyed the bales we dumped an awful lot of the bales we made that year that way so we're hoping now doing it this way will get done right and so that's the straw there's not too many bales uh, because we're baling at pretty much si just a bit less than silage pressure we wouldn't have many of them bales anyways and so yeah that's really it that's the combine a little bit just above the garden baler literally hot on his heels and uh, 77 18 literally waiting for the baler to make them so this is really nearly finished now but just roll up the last of it so that's great perfect perfect anyways leave it at that for now and we'll finish off the video when we're rolling, pushing up the last of it that won't be a bad three days work though. Well, not a bad three days work at all.
that is it for today's video. The pit is covered. I know I didn't actually show any of that. And then maybe a few days after we put it in. Um, but anyways, the last thing you would have seen was our new lights on the 6290. Very, very happy with them. They're in it. Very happy with them. There's a huge amount of light off. You've seen there the before and after. Uh, I thought about drawing foot and my brother was bringing in bales of straw off the field and fantastic light there's a serious amount of light however hope you can hear me because it is quite windy and the tires 690 is running in the background but anyway there's the crimp pit sealed and um, the reason there is sand on it is because the crimp needs to be very well sealed and also it is a disaster for rodents birds rats tearing the plastic getting at it there's four layers of plastic on that and we actually need more sand on it you can see there's a lot of the sand got washed off it's all sitting here that's because the nice wednesday night the heavy rain it washed the sand off and that's kind of happens when you have sand on it so we get more sand for it but we're happy with it a little bit not as much in it as we were planning but we're happy enough it's more than twice what we had last year and at the rate we're going with her grain in the shed we should have lots of fodder to feed the cattle for the winter the hauler cattle finished but anyways that's it for today's video if you liked what you've seen with them lights and how good they are link in the description down below to get yourself straight to get yourself a pair of them also to dh agri's website so if you want to have a look at the other range of lights he does you can have a look down there and a big thanks to dh agri for sponsoring today's video it makes doing these videos so much more worthwhile having sponsors and i'm just very grateful for every sponsor i get anyways i'm going to leave it at that as always please like and subscribe to the channel leave a comment down below if you have any questions videos every tuesday thursday sunday i better go get some receding done that is it from me good luck